Good evening and welcome. You're on board the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. And on the show this evening, we are counting down to India's biggest demolition ever. Hold your breath for the biggest demolition. 32 story twin towers to crash down. End game for Noida's illegal skyscrapers. Countdown to epic demolition begins. Will super tower demolition go safely? Big focus on news track. In 72 hours from now, 32 floors of the Supertech Twin Towers in the national capital will be demolished. The apartment complex has been rigged with explosives. The demolition squads are in place. Nine seconds is all it will take to raise the buildings to dust. The last time India witnessed a controlled explosion was when two years ago, four apartment complexes were brought down in Kochi. What is said to happen in the capital will be much bigger. In 2019, four high-rise buildings in Ernakulam, Kerala were demolished as they were in violation of the Coastal Regulation Zone rules. Four apartment complexes in Maradu were razed down two years ago on 12th of January. H2O Holy Faith, Alpha Serene, Jan's Coral Cove and Golden Kavalorum were demolished by an implosion in just about 12 seconds. Over 2,500 kilometers away and three years later, the same fate awaits Noida's Supertech Twin Towers. While a similar implosion technique will be used for Noida 2, here's how this demolition will be the biggest ever in India. There were four apartment complexes in Kochi. In Noida, there are two towers. There were maximum 16 floors in the luxury high-rises in Kerala. In Noida, the two towers have 32 and 30 floors. In Kochi, about 122 flats were demolished. That number could go up to 1,000. Noida. The Maradu flats were over 65 meters high. The Supertech towers stand at over 100 meters. And while 1,800 kilograms of explosives were used to bring down the Maradu complexes, it will take 3,500 kilograms of explosives to demolish the Noida towers. In Kochi, the buildings were reduced to dust in 12 seconds. The Supertech towers will be gone in just nine seconds. This was probably the first time that India witnessed a demolition of a residential high-rise building. But around the world, controlled explosions have been used to demolish buildings. One of the most famous Seattle building ever, the Kingdom, was brought down in March 2000. Built in 1976, it was the largest building ever demolished by an implosion at the time with a volume of nearly 700,000 cubic feet. At 381 feet tall, the 1972 build AFA tower became the tallest building to ever be demolished using explosives when it came down in Frankfurt, Germany in 2014. The 50,000 ton skyscraper in the heart of the city attracted over 10,000 onlookers on the explosion day. And a wall up to 20 feet high ran around the site to help stop any potential flying debris. Two miles worth of concrete blew up in Unison in 2013. Built in 1997, the viaduct in the Chinese city of Wuhan needed a precision blast to end its 15-year life. Wires carrying 100,000 volts ran alongside the bridge and a gas pipeline underneath it to trigger the explosives in a sequence. Come August 28, India's national capital region will witness something as explosive and dramatic. Bureau Report, India Today.
Essentially, there are two towers, the Apex Tower and the Cien Tower. Uh, these have been charged with 3,500 kilograms of explosives. 9,000 holes have been drilled into the building, uh, and that building at this moment is laden with explosive material. The towers will implode inwards upon detonation. It's like a waterfall effect where you're trying to ensure that it all comes down in the same space. And in a moment from now, uh, the people who are responsible for bringing the towers down will be joining us to talk about what's happening. But before that, let's take a look uh, at the costs involved in setting up the tower and taking it down. seconds. That's all that will take for Noida's Supertech Twin Towers to be reduced to dust. For those who put their life savings in these homes, the demolition will be truly shattering. The much talked about Supertech Twin Towers of the ATS is right behind me here with explosives 3,500 kgs that have been layered and at least every floor will be detonated simul simultaneously on the 28th of August. Uh, it's going to be quite a sight for uh, residents across to watch and also a point of worry. Uh, of course, the sound, the pollution, the, the dust that this would uh, result in is something that residents are concerned. So many of them actually taking off for a weekend, not uh, willing to stay in the vicinity until this drive is done. So most of those buildings that you see, ATS uh, as well as Emerald Towers there all uh, have uh, packed their buildings with white sheets so that uh, they prevent dust from coming into those uh, windows in the houses uh, in right neighboring to that ATS building. But it's very interesting to see how this demolition will be carried out because uh, it's been years that residents locally have been fighting for this to go down. And once this goes down, all that debris will be moved out to a designated location. Cars in the vicinity will be allowed to park at a special multi-facility parking uh, allotted by the Noida authorities. So it seems like this entire demolition drive is fully under control by that company at display as well as Noida authorities. The explosion will also come at an explosive cost. At current market price, a 3 BHK apartment in the Twin Towers would cost 1.13 crore rupees at least. With 915 flats, the towers would have made more than rupees 1,190 crore rupees if all had gone well. The cost of construction is estimated to be 70 crore rupees. The demolition will cost 20 crores. Now, the bankrupt company is finding it hard to even pay for the demolition. Supertech is paying around 4.5 to 5.5 crore rupees for the demolition. The rest of the amount, around 14.5 to 15.5 crore rupees, is expected to be made by selling off the debris. Edifice Engineering, the demolition company, has 100 crore rupees insurance for collateral damage due to the blast. The company will cover cost for damages, if any, to societies next to the Twin Towers. Bureau Report, India Today. Joining me on the news track tonight is Utkarsh Mehta, a partner at Edifice Engineering. It's the firm that is responsible for taking this tower down safely. So it's a 150 crore rupee company. This is what they do, demolish buildings. He'll tell us about the preparations that have been made. With us also is Rajiv Narula. He's a real estate lawyer. He's been involved with several of the firms in the real estate sector, understands their challenges, pains and tribulations. We've got Anil Satcher. Anil Satcher is the Vice President of the Residence Welfare Association at Emerald Court. Nandini Datta is a resident of the Supertech Emerald Court. We've got Lavina Varyani, teach a resident at the ATS Village. So welcome to all our guests. I want to start with Utkarsh. Explain to everybody watching, because this is essentially just a tower coming down, but given the scale of the tower, uh, there's a huge amount of interest in what's going to happen. So explain the kind of preparations you've made and how you're going to ensure that this tower comes down in a way that the buildings in the vicinity are not disturbed and how does this compare with other demolitions in India and globally? Right, I mean, uh, it's now six months uh, we've been on site mm -hmm. and uh, we've uh, here with our 
foreign collaborator in jet demolition from uh, South Africa. Uh, overall, if you see, uh, we are more acumen in execution of these kinds of engineering projects. Uh, our past has uh, some records and we have some precedence on this. Uh, but uh, if I speak particular about this project, yes, it took us six months now. And uh, uh, initially we started with the designing of the building, the blast design, what we call. And then uh, the preparation of uh, what we to tell today, around three and a half thousand kgs of uh, explosives have been deployed. Uh, this has been deployed into the holes which have been drilled and cored uh, in last six months. Uh, precisely, it is 9,642 uh, holes which we have drilled, which, which sums up to approximately 19 kilometers of drilling into these columns. Now, these explosives have been uh, deployed. Uh, now, when, when these explosives ignite, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, debris mm -hmm. which would start flying. So, in order to arrest these debris, uh, we've covered a lot of columns, all the columns rather, with uh, wire mesh and then with geotextile cloths. There are various layers of it. Somewhere it is four, somewhere it is five. So this was the initial uh, part of preparation along with removal of all the blocks in the structure. So basically when we start a project, we always see what are the hindrances uh, which will arrest the fall of the structure. And uh, where here we saw there were three things. Uh, one, there was a lift shaft. The other was the staircase. And then the third was the shear walls, the heavy shear walls uh, of, in the structure. So this took us three uh, almost three months to prepare these all three structures uh, in, within the uh, twin towers. Okay. And uh, uh, today we are sitting on a stage where we are almost ready. Uh, the explosives have been charged and uh, it has been uh, uh, thoroughly covered by police so that no one enters the premises. Now the second question which you asked me was on the safety of the surrounding buildings. Yes, that's the most critical part. That was the first thing which was seen by us. Uh, when we first had a site visit way back in uh, last October. And uh, uh, this was the first challenge which we saw, which is a 9 meter building away, that is Aster 2. And then we had a gas, gas pipeline, a gale gas pipeline running underground, uh, the p same plot, which is almost, almost averaged 4 meters below the ground. So these two were the major challenges. However, uh, one satisfying thing uh, during the site visit we saw was we had some space between the towers, the twin towers, the Sian and the ATS compound wall. So that was one place where we envisaged that the fall can be directed. Now this fall is not a free fall. I mean we have designed the fall the way we want it. Mm -hmm. it, it just cannot come down on its own. We have made sure in the designing part that uh, the fall is directed the, way, the place where we want. Okay. So, the so we'll talk a bit about this. I want to go across to Lavina Variani because you happen to stay in ATS village. If our producers can just call up that graphic which explains where ATS is. So you are perilously close to uh, this particular tower. Now what are your concerns? You have heard from Utkarsh at uh, Edifice the preparations that have been made. What are you most worried about tonight? Yeah, so there are a lot of apprehensions like you just said that it's once in a lifetime and this is one of the biggest demolitions taking place in NCR. And being so close to the demolition site, and I'm sorry I can't just show it to you from my balcony because of uh, the lighting now. But we're just 60 meters away from the demolition site and uh, the apprehensions are many regarding the impact of the shock waves and the long-term impact on the foundation. I'm sure Mr. Utkarsh has taken care of the nitty gritties but still as residents we are scared. So it's only natural, especially with such a big building coming down, does it potentially impact the uh, structure of the buildings in the nearby area? No, I mean, I would say absolutely no. There are three reasons why I would be confident in saying this. The number one is uh, we've done the predictions on vibrations and that to a third party back in UK. Uh, the vibrations suggested by the report which have been submitted are very minimal. Now, uh, that, that's the maximum where what we see is 34 mm per second. We call it as peak particle velocity. That's PPV. Uh, in Indian standards, anything above around 25 mm per second is anyways allowed. That's the first thing. 
Now, since it is 34 at a 10 meter distance, what we've done, we've tr tried to reduce these vibrations by making sure that we don't get the structure come down on the ground at one go. You, if you remember, you rightly said it's a waterfall implosion. So there's a logic behind keeping this waterfall implosion. So the first point of the building, which will be grounded, and the last point of the structure, which will be grounded, there will be a gap of almost seven seconds. Now, I'm, I'm talking in seconds. These seconds are too long a period okay. to create a vibration. So there, that's the, the, that's the basic design La, which you've Rajiv done. Narula, a lot of the real estate companies are looking at this very carefully because if this twin tower, once it's brought down, there are, and there are so many illegal buildings that have been set up in gross violation of the law, the fear is that this could become a norm. There's a counter argument being made that once such a big building had been set up, could it have been used for some public purpose, some charitable purpose? So you take it away from the builder, put it to some public good use and allow for that to continue. This was argued before the court, the Supreme Court decided in its wisdom against it, but do you think that should have been a more reasonable approach? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, to understand that uh, what the Supreme Court said, we will have to just uh, uh, understand the nature of construction. There are about four types of constructions. First construction is as per sanction plan. Second type of construction is completely illegal, where there are no sanction plans. Third type of construction is where the sanction plans are there, but there are few irregularity, which is called irregular uh, construction. So therefore, irregular construction has got two limbs. One limb is which cannot be regularized. Like if there is no FSI available or you construct in a CRZ zone or you construct in a manner which is hazardous to the occupants, like you reduce the open spaces around you where fire brigade cannot enter, etc., which cannot be condoned because there is a mandatory provision that these are the mandatory requirement for open spaces, CRZ cannot be violated, FSI uh, norms cannot be violated. But if you have just enclosed a balcony, that is regularizable construction. But if it is, if it is irregular construction, which cannot be regularized, to my mind, Supreme Court in French uh, colony case, Kempakola case has rightly said that uh, builders are violating the building law uh, out of their own volition. It is not an accidental mm. oversleep. Correct. O accidental oversleep, I can understand. But if you allow one building to stay, then you will have to adopt that yardstick for 2,000 other buildings which are constructed illegally. So how many buildings government will take over and what will happen to that? And lawlessness, there is no accountability. According to me, even corporation is accountable for that. But till today, nobody is held accountable. If corporation sanctions the plan, it is their duty to supervise that. If the officers take money or for whatever reason, if they don't, they closed their eyes when the unauthorized construction was going on, then they should be made accountable and then only this menace of unauthorized construction in the entire country will stop. Otherwise, this kind no. of that purchaser suffers, the builder will suffer. I don't say builder will suffer because they, have, they are the wrongdoer. Sometimes they are the wrongdoer because of certain conditions not being uh, complied by them, certain permissions are delayed, therefore they keep on constructing. If it is regularizable, then it's fine. If it is not, then according to me, the construction... Now, Nandini Datta, to... you happen to live in Emerald Court, which is also a super tech building. Uh, how does this demolition and the fact that this one particular builder and this demolition is so much in the news impact others who happen to stay in towers set up by the same builder? Um, so, as mentioned earlier also, uh, so I am a resident in Actor 2, which is just 9 meters away from the site of demolition. So, um, knowing that, uh, there is definitely some kind of uncertainty, which is, and due to that, there is definitely a lot of apprehension and uh, caused amongst uh, the people and the residents of our society. And, uh, I mean, uh, because of that, there's a lot of uh, fear amongst people as to what will happen because nobody can guarantee, I mean, um, the situation where we leave our home, but when we come back, we cannot, we, nobody can guarantee what the situation will be when we return back um, post the explosion. So what are you so, planning to do on Sunday, given the fact that you stay literally just nine meters away, yeah. what's your Sunday looking like? So we'll be um, going somewhere, definitely we'll be going to our relative's house uh, as of now, that's the plan. 
but definitely it's it's a it's a, a huge thing that is happening because uh the tower the buildings are too too huge and uh it's just right close to my tower and uh there is definitely apprehension because of the uncertainty as to what will happen definitely as residents of the society were taking necessary precautions and all measures to cover our houses the glass panels the doors etc and uh, you know covering up the fridge electronics and all the necessary items but uh, nobody can actually guarantee what will happen on the day of explosion and post that because there will be a lot of um, debris a great amount of pollution and um, uh, you know a lot of residue that we left behind. when no, all no. this debris is in the air the smoke no no it is uh, it would take almost uh, this is what is uh, estimated 10 minutes for the dust cloud to uh, dissipate now it all depends on that day the direction of wind number 1 and the speed of wind. Uh, today we've been uh, estimating it every day. We're seeing every day the uh, forecast. The wind direction is towards the west, and when you say towards the west, so that's uh, in front of the road, and there's a park, uh, Noida Authority Park there. So uh, we foresee that uh, none of the societies will have dust in their premises. Uh, that's number one, and uh, this would not take more than 10 minutes to dissipate because we'll be waiting for the dust to go. My team of six people will be there next to the buildings, 100 meters away, uh, when they push the button. So the team. Uh, She's will be nine meters away. I mean, if I was nine meters away from a building that's coming down, I'd be mighty spooked myself. Rahul, I can assure you one thing: if I would have been permitted by the Indian law, I would have been standing right on that building and seeing the fall. Sir, apka to danda hai. That's what you're going to no, say. No, 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 it's not business. It's not business. I'm telling you, I myself would stand in the Astor Two building. It is that confidence I can give it to this uh, small lady that uh, you please don't worry. Uh, we are confident on the work which we have put or the efforts which we have done for last eight months. And to the tune, I can also assure you that is a lot of engineering, lot of science, lot of physics, lot of math, lot of consultants have put their heads in. And uh, with this joint efforts, we are not doing anything haywire. It's a perfect planned engineered demolition what we are here to, uh, doing here. And if I wouldn't have been confident, the first way I would have been, uh, I wouldn't have ever taken the job. So and you wouldn't have been on TV so confident. See that yeah, too. So he has confidence. Now whether that's well founded or unfounded, we'll find out Sunday afternoon. Hopefully he's well founded, but at least he has confidence in the service that he's mm -hmm. rendering. India's biggest demolition uh, clearly poses a threat to those who live nearby. At least that's the way the residents feel. And these are high-rise buildings. You're worried about foundational safety. It's only inevitable. People staying in the vicinity have been asked to evacuate by 7 a.m. on the 28th of August. Residents of Emerald Court, which is just 9 meters away, and ATS Green Village, uh, which is about 35 meters away from the demolition site, are anxious and mighty scared. Indrajit Kaur and Nandini are neighbours living in Emerald Court. Their homes face the twin towers of Siyan and Apex scheduled for Sunday demolition. They and others living in the tower are busy preparing for Sunday. So, bubble sheets are mostly the things that are wrapped in the bubble. They 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 are wrapped in the bubble. Which is not done with fastener thing. Television, fridge, electric appliances. Uh, fridge for Garaki, so I'll put the bed sheet. It's a big, big thing that's happening, and towers right next to our uh, mm. uh, society. That's very possibly sense of massive vibration, yeah, aftermath, we, aftershocks. Right, right. Mm. But definitely, it's a good, good news that you know it will get demolished, and you know we'll have this nice space because it, the construction is all illegal, so you never know. And that's what you fought for. <laughs> right, the right, right. These curtains have been imposed. And this is to prevent dust particles and the massive uh, debris from falling inside the residential premises. Now, if I just could take out this portion to show you, in that black sheet there you see that is the twin tower building which will be demolished at several pillars. The explosives have been fit upon and now all the portions at different places calculating its physics have been covered totally and this is to prevent the shocks, this is to prevent the shooting of uh, the material when the blast takes place and also there you see the trenches have been dug out all around this building where there is a loose mud, huge amount of used debris, loose debris already is put out and this is to prevent the vibration when blast 
blasts take place. They will all have to leave their houses on 28 August. There is apprehension and last minute preparations to be made. The RWA of the society has given proper instructions for the residents to prevent any untoward incident or accident. Rajesh Rana was one of the residents who fought the long legal battle with the builder and the Noida authority. Now he and his family are busy protecting their home from the demolition of the illegal construction. कुछ लोग तो ये पारसना सिल्वर सिटी आसपास के जो सोसाइटीज हैं वो भी बहुत हेल्पफुल हैं और वो लोग कह रहे हैं कि अगर आप आना चाहें तो हमारे यहाँ सुबह सात बजे से रात तक रुकिए और जब सेटल हो जाए डस्टर्स तो आप अपने घर चले दूसरे आरडब्ल्यूएस ने आपको मदद मदद कर रहे हैं लंच डिनर ब्रेकफास्ट सारा अरेंज किया उन्होंने बहुत अच्छा अरेंजमेंट कर रहे अजय मेहरा प्लान्स टू लीव अ डे बिफोर द डेमोलिशन ऑन सैटरडे लाइक ऑल अदर रेसिडेंट्स He is satisfied with the promises of compensation in case there is any damage to his home. The company responsible to carry out the demolition has been able to assure these residents. Tootna to hai hi. Isme hum jitna apni taraf se hum bacha sakte hain, hum zaroor bachayenge. Aur jitni wall hangings hain, sab utar ke jayenge. Crockery, almira hum khali kar ke ja rahe hain. वो सब घर में टीवी है फ्रिज है जो बड़े इलेक्ट्रिक अप्लायंस करके जाएंगे सबको अनप्लग करके जाएंगे मेन ऑफ करके जाएंगे सारा ऑन द डे ऑफ डी डे व्हेन दे लीव द इलेक्ट्रिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कनेक्शन विल बी टोटली पुट टू हॉल्ट पुट टू टोटली स्विच ऑफ दिस इज रियली गोन बी चैलेंजिंग द एरफिस कंपनी हैज इशूड हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपीज ऑफ इंश्योरेंस फॉर द हाउसेस ऑफ दीज रेजिडेंट्स हाउ There will be perhaps certain apprehensions, though the safety and security issue have been addressed. But somewhere in the mind, the apprehensions will be alive until they come back and see their dream home safe post demolition. For the next few days, residents of this society and others nearby are busy preparing for the demolition of the twin tower. Once the debris is removed and the dust of demolition settles down, they hope to have sunnier days. With Ashutosh Mishra, Bureau Report, India Today. So, is the Residents Welfare Association in that area satisfied with the preparations? Anil Kumar Sachar, you're the Vice President of the RM, RWA of Emerald Court. Uh, the Noida Authority, the CEO locally, have made multiple preparations. The person executing this uh, demolition seems confident. Are you reasonably assured this will go as per plan? What are your big concerns at this moment? Yeah. Okay. Actually, uh, we have been monitoring this for the last eight months, and our president, Eco RWA, Mr. U B S Titotia, have been constantly being coordinating with the Noida Authority and this uh, in close touch with Edifice and all and C B R I, and we are in the hands of government authorities and a renowned uh, Edifice companies with us, and C B R is also there. I, I we feel that zero error will be there. And we expect it will be a very nice uh, result. Will be very, um, uh, very successful. Because, uh, and all efforts have been made jointly by us also to understand the things. And we are moving in the right direction. Now the D-Day is very near, and we are expecting a positive result and with zero zero error. And because okay, Utkarsh, uh, if it's not awkward, what's the kind of money measures. you make for demolishing a tower like this? How uh, how big is the contract? This contract, uh, I would prefer not to, but uh, it, it's media. It's saying somewhere close to 18 crores. Uh, but uh, if you ask me, I mean, I would not put that figure right. But I'm anyways overrunning the project. So what does that mean? I'm not. I mean, I can't you answer how 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 valuable is this project? Like how much money will you for get us, for taking the tower down? I would say, if you ask me right away, it's nothing, which I'm going to make out of it. We've spent overspend uh, on this project. Why? In what way? Yeah, we we have uh, done lots of things uh, apart from what was envisaged right on day one. Uh, just purely yeah, from surely the you are not doing this out of pocket. No, I am doing this. I can I can share whenever you come back. I can share the data with you once I finish the project. But as on so paper, so you can pay roughly 18 crore rupees for it. That's how overall uh, it's been envisaged. Yes, some from the steel and some from the uh, from Supertech. So uh, put together, it should be in that range. Uh, but uh, I'm sure uh, I'm going to overrun this project. With uh, many uh, uh, reasons behind it, we have this because uh, after the test blast, we've changed lot of things. We've improved the coverings because we thought that these are strong enough. We improved a little bit, couple of floors to blast, where we uh, spent more on the uh, explosives as well. 
then the covering we spend a lot i mean you will not believe we've got almost 120 kilometers of cloth the geotextile cloth has been deployed in the property no, in no, the my, my bigger concern as i hear this rajiv narula is how do you prevent these things from happening the next time this is just terribly unfortunate that you've got the noida authority in cahoots with the super tech builders they're exceeding the floor area ratio the far uh, which had been allocated to them more than 30 individuals apparently made money hands over fist in this whole project and the sit found multiple wrongdoings all of them willful it's not as if it happened accidentally how do we set up a governance architecture which prevents this from happening if you if i i have to answer one word answer then it is accountability mm -hmm. that is the biggest thing if a, an officer who is uh, given the job of sanctioning the plan and supervising the construction he should be held personally accountable if i give you one small example in kolkata whole building in 1967 came up without sanction plan the order of demolition was passed the matter traveled to supreme court supreme court said that if see look at it if it is possible to regularize regularize it otherwise if it is not possible to regularize you will have to demolish it that is from that point of time people started constructing taking queue because there are provisions under planning act that you can apply for regularization of an unauthorized construction which is irregular so people started doing ramp, taking advantage of these provisions and started uh, willingly construct in violation of the building bylaws and development control regulation therefore if somebody has to be held responsible i think a lot has to be done at the planning authority level to make sure that such things don't happen in future and a particular oh, this is one of the biggest demolitions in the world ever uh, it would come in top uh, 5 i would uh, if i'm not mistaken it would come in top 5 one of the top 5 biggest in, demolitions yeah, in the world in term, yeah in the world in it, in terms of height in terms of the volume in terms of the tightness of the structure so every demolition is different so uh, i would not pinpoint i mean you have many parameters to measure it so volume by, by means of volume by means of steel by means of height uh, by means of tightness of the structure where you want the structure to get down so uh, there are many spare parameters but yes it is it is going to be one of the top uh, five demolitions in the world Uh, this is already the world demolition forum is uh, looking at it uh, we uh, there lots of medias uh, uh, world across have been uh, trying to cover this uh, because they know i mean this is already there in wikipedia somewhere i read this already in the list of wikipedia on the top demolitions the uh, only guy laughing to the bank is utkarsh huh? and his firm everybody else no, like I... lavina like nandini they might be uh, rattled and quite scared as they should be uh you've got utkash doing a sub changasi on us right now saying no worry uh, all will be well but uh, stay well uh lavina nandini i hope you and everybody else you know who are in that area this is quite spooky and only naturally so but uh, it's also important to do some analysis after the demolition utkash yes to convince lavina and uh, nandini and everybody yes, else that the buildings are safe like is there a way of achieving that like how do i know that you've done your job in the way that you have and that the foundational strength of the other buildings in the nearby area hasn't been impacted sure i mean we have uh, we're going to do a post uh, demolition uh, structural audits and analysis uh, and uh, to understand we're going to have lots of monitoring apparatus throughout the periphery of the uh, twin towers we along with cbri we are going to study a lot of data which we going to recover after the fall i mean i can tell you couple of things we are uh, trying to see how many seconds it took us to get down in a black box we are trying to put some sensors which obviously might get damaged also but we are doing that so there is a lot of study we jointly uh, along with cbri uh, at we are both of us at one page trying to share a lot of data cbri is looking from a research perspective that yes this is going because as they an, know as an engineering marvel clearly utkarsh is very excited everybody else is quite worried and we'll see what happens sunday you're thinking of it as an engineering project poor lavina is sitting there and saying mere ghar ka kya hoga and that Correct. really is her concern and only naturally so so we'll track this very closely for the time being to all our guests for joining us thank you very much uh, we will hold you to your word and we'll you know hope and pray that you know what you're doing and it comes down in a 
safe and sound fashion. The Hyderabad hate cauldron continues to simmer with suspended BJP MLA T. Raja being released within just 10 hours of arrest. Protesters hit the streets in old Hyderabad demanding that Raja be hanged. Sartan's Juda slogans were raised even by children. Hyderabad on edge. Massive protest. MLA T. Raja Singh, effigies burn. Echoes of Sartan Sejuda beheading chants. Police detained scores of protesters on Wednesday as hundreds came out on the streets against the release of Raja Singh from jail on bail. The police held flag march in Old City as it brought the situation under control. Suspended BJP leader was arrested on Tuesday over his allegedly derogatory remarks on Prophet Muhammad. Raja Singh spent just 10 hours in custody as the local court granted him bail saying criminal procedure code was not followed in making the arrest. While Raja Singh's release sparked celebrations at the BJP office, it triggered protests in the old city of Hyderabad. The main cause of the protest is the hateful, derogatory and uncouth language which was used by the BJP and its MLA. Telangana Congress Neta Firoz Khan even issued a brazen threat of violence against T. Raja. The protest that saw beheading calls also included school children who were made to chant Death for Raja Singh slogan. National Commission for Protection of Child's Rights has assured action against those who instigated children to chant Sartan Sejuda. We will take action against the perpetrators who are using children. This is a sign of child abuse. Commission strictly prohibits such things. Juvenile Justice Act prohibits such things. Use of children and any kind of violent or radical activities is prohibited by the law of life. The beheading chants were made in the presence of several police personnel who chose to turn a blind eye to provocative sloganeering. Force that has been deployed on one side. Uh, it is shocking to see that uh, you know the the police here are still you know waiting on hand. But on the other hand, you know the, uh, the number of crowds, that is the people here have been continuously you know increasing here since uh, morning. Uh, let me remind you, these protests here have only been increasing since last night. With the Purva Jaya Chandran in Hyderabad, Bureau Report, India Today. <laughs> The CBI today raided 25 locations linked to four RJD Netas in Bihar. The raids happened just hours before Nitish Kumar and the Tejasvi Yadav government was going to face the flaw test. The raids were linked to the land for job scam in which Lalu Prasad Yadav and his family are accused. Patna, Madhubari, Gurugram. The CBI raids more than 24 locations. Three of them allegedly linked to Bihar Deputy Chief Minister Tejashvi Yadav. The raid are in connection with the alleged land for job scam. The sources in the Central Bureau of Investigation say Lalu Prasad Yadav, Rabri Devi, Tejashvi Yadav, Lalu Yadav's two daughters and some prominent RJD leaders are allegedly involved in the scam. Those raided on Wednesday include RJD MPs Ashwak Karim and Fayaz Ahmed. MLC Sunil Singh and former MLC Subodh Roy. Three locations allegedly linked to Tejashvi Yadav in Delhi and Gurugram were also raided. These include 
the Urban Cube's 71 shopping mall in Gurugram and two companies. Raids that took place on the day the newly formed Bihar government sought a trust vote triggered a political showdown. <laughs> असल में आप लोगों को जो पीड़ा हो रही है आप डर चुके हैं उसने जमाई तो आगे कर दिया आप लोग पीछे हो गए डरने के लिए तो डरने वाला नहीं है हम लोग डरने वाला में से नहीं है आज पहली बार नहीं हो रहा है छप्पनमारी हमारा बिहार की जनता सब हमारा पलवार है बिहार की जनता पलवार है पलवार देख रहा है बिहार की जनता the RGD's new ally, the Janata Dal United, came out in support of the others. We will go together and we will have the love of the people in the society. We want to be a doctor, we want to be a doctor, we want to be a doctor, we don't want to be a doctor. We will not be able to do all of this and we will be a doctor. The Bharatiya Janata Party hit back at the RGD. भारतीय जनता पार्टी किसी को लगाती नहीं है किसी को फंसाती नहीं है आज से डेढ़ साल पहले नीतीश कुमार जी ने खुद ही कंप्लेन किया था जब इसको मान में करोड़ों रुपए जा रहे थे और पकड़े जा रहे थे The land for job scam dates back to 2004-2009 period when Lalu Prasad Yadav was the Union Railways Minister. During the period, the Yadav family and companies linked to them allegedly got land in exchange for jobs in the railways. They allegedly got land as gift or bought land at throwaway prices. The Yadavs are accused of acquiring 1.05 lakh square feet land in such a manner. Lalu Yadav already is serving a jail term in the fodder scam. Land for job scam could mean more trouble for the Yadav family. With Rohit Singh in Patna, Bureau Report, India Today. This is where I wrap up the news track tonight. For your time and your trust, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye, goodnight.